April. There was a nice little girl. She was ten years old. Her name was April. One day, April asked her parents why she was called April. Her mother answered that she was called April because she was born in April. The little girl was very happy to hear that. She liked her name. April really liked the month April too. This was because she had her birthday in that month. Her parents made her a party. All her friends came and celebrated with her, and she received a lot of presents. One day, her mother became pregnant, and soon April had a little brother. Her brother was born in February. Everyone came to visit the family. Everyone suggested names for the new baby. April did not understand what the problem was. This looked very simple to her. She said that if the baby was born in February, the correct name was February. Valentina's secret. Valentina is seven years old. She lives in a big house. She has a huge room. She has many toys, and she has a lot of friends. But Valentina is not happy. She has a secret. She doesn't want to tell anyone about her secret. She feels embarrassed. The problem is that if nobody knows about it, there is no one that can help her. Valentina doesn't write her homework. When there is an exam, she gets sick. She doesn't tell anyone, but the truth is she can't read and write. Valentina doesn't remember the letters of the alphabet. One day, Valentina's teacher finds out. She sees that Valentina can't write on the board. She calls her after class and asks her to tell the truth. Valentina says, "It is true. I don't know how to read and write." The teacher listens to her. She wants to help Valentina. She tells her, "That's okay." You can read and write if we practice together. So Valentina and her teacher meet every day after class. They practice together. Valentina works hard. Now she knows how to read and write. Spain. Spain is a country in Europe. It borders France to the north, Portugal to the west, and the Mediterranean Sea to the south and east. Spain has many different and interesting places to visit. Tourists have visited cities such as Madrid and Barcelona for decades to see the museums and parks there. A decade is ten years. People have traveled to the southern coast of Spain to go on vacation to the beach for many years as well. They have also stopped in Granada to see the famous Alhambra Palace along their travels. In addition to many tourists visiting Spain, people from Spain. Have traveled around the world. In fact, Spain has had a history of exploration for a very long time.
Exploration means finding new places and things. Throughout its history, Spain has been one of the most active countries in exploring the world. This was especially true in the 1400s and 1500s. During this time, Spain was responsible for exploring much of South and Central America. Schuyler Schuyler goes to work every day. She works in an office. She works very hard. She starts at 7 o'clock in the morning and finishes at 10 o'clock at night. She likes her work and she wants to be a good worker, but she has one problem. Her boss is not a very good boss. He tells her to do one thing, and then he changes his mind. He tells her to do another thing, and then he changes his mind again. He tells her to do something else, and again, changes his mind. Skylar doesn't like this. She says, this is a waste of time. Today Skylar decides to talk with him. She goes to his room and says, I like to work. I work a lot of hours. I am a good worker. But I can't work like this. We have to work better. You need to tell me what to do without changing your mind. Skylar's boss listens to her. He sees that she is right. He promises to listen to her advice. Now Skylar is happy. She comes to work every day. She starts at 7 o'clock and finishes at 4 o'clock, but she completes much more things than before. Skylar and her boss are happy. Owen's car. Owen likes cars. He reads about cars in magazines and he watches shows about cars on TV. His head is full of cars. He tells his parents, please, 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 could you buy me a car? No, says Owen's mom, you are too young to drive a car. This is dangerous. No, says Owen's dad, a car is very expensive. We can't buy you a car now. Owen is very sad. He wants a car. He wants a fast red sports car. He decides to build one. He buys books and reads about the subject. He hangs around at the garage and watches the mechanics fix the cars. It is very interesting for him, and he has a lot of fun. Finally, he starts building his own car. He tells his parents about it. His father doesn't believe him. He says it's too difficult. His mother says she is worried. She doesn't want him to do anything dangerous. After two months, Owen invites his parents to see his creation. His parents are surprised. It is beautiful. It is red. It is shiny. It is a big toy sports car. Owen can sit inside it and drive. Owen's parents are very happy and proud. Owen's dad says, I was sure you can do it.
Owen's mom says, I was sure it was not dangerous. Owen smiles and drives away. Lucy's acting. Lucy works as a secretary. She answers phone calls and types letters. She makes coffee and goes to the post office. She doesn't like her work. She is bored. I would like to do something more exciting, she thinks, I want an exciting job. Lucy actually wants to be an actress. She goes to auditions, but she doesn't pass any. She is confused. She doesn't know what to do to solve this problem, so she decides to ask her friend Victoria. Victoria is a good actress. She is not very famous, but she is more successful than Lucy. Lucy asks Victoria to look at her acting and tell her what the problem is. Victoria is happy to help. She watches Lucy carefully. She takes notes. In the end, Lucy asks her, well, be honest. What is wrong with me? Victoria smiles and says, Lucy, you are a wonderful actress. You act very well. There is only one problem. What? What is the problem? Lucy calls. Well, Victoria answers, you act very well, but you speak too quietly. I can't hear a word. Talking about dress. Jane and Laura are walking to the mall. They want to buy new clothes. Jane has some money and Laura has some money. Suddenly, Jane is calling, Laura. Laura. Look at that dress. Isn't it beautiful? I want that dress, but I don't have enough money. Laura is calling. What are you talking about? This is an ugly dress. It is just horrible. I don't even want to see this dress. Okay, okay. Jane is whispering sadly. Suddenly Laura is calling, oh my god. Look at this dress. It is beautiful. I want this dress. Oh, but look at the price. It is too expensive for me. Now Jane is calling. What are you talking about? This is an ugly dress. It is really horrible. I don't even want to see it. Okay, okay. Laura is whispering sadly. Now Jane is sad and Laura is sad. They are walking home. They have no new clothes, but they know that next time they should respect other opinions. A surprise from Australia. The school ends and Erica quickly puts her books in the bag and runs out of the class. Today is a special day. Erica is very excited. She runs home and thinks about her uncle. She spoke with him on the phone a week ago. He returns from Australia and he brings a special surprise with him.
Erica is very happy. She thinks about the surprise that he brings. Maybe he brings a surfboard? That is fun. I can learn how to surf. Maybe he brings Australian nuts? Oh, I can eat nuts all day. Or maybe he brings a kangaroo. That is not good. I don't have a place in my room for a kangaroo. Erica finally arrives home. Her parents are there and her uncle is there. She is very happy to see him. They hug and she jumps up and down. Uncle, uncle, she calls. What special surprise do you have for me from Australia? Well, her uncle smiles and answers, I have for you an Australian aunt. The Laboratory Mia's father had a laboratory, but she had no idea what was in it. Her dad always closed and locked the door when he went in. She knew that he used it to do projects for work. He never told Mia what these projects were. One night, Mia approached the door to the laboratory. She stopped and thought, I wonder what crazy experiment he is doing now. Suddenly, she heard a loud noise. It sounded like an evil laugh. The noise scared her, so she walked quickly back to her room. The next night, her friend Liz came to her house. When Liz arrived, Mia told her about the night before. Oh, it was terrible, she said. Why don't we see what is in there? Liz asked. It will be a fun adventure. Mia felt nervous about going into her father's laboratory, but she agreed. As always, the door was locked. They waited until Mia's father left the laboratory to eat dinner. He didn't lock the door. Liz said, Let's go. The laboratory was dark. The girls walked down the stairs carefully. Mia smelled strange chemicals. What terrible thing was her father creating? Suddenly, they heard an evil laugh. It was even worse than the one Mia heard the night before. What if a monster was going to kill them? Mia had to do something. She shouted for help. Mia's father ran into the room and turned on the lights. Oh, no, he said. You must have learned my secret. Your monster tried to kill us, Mia said. Monster, he asked. You mean this? He had a pretty doll in his hands. The doll laughed. The laugh didn't sound so evil anymore. I made this for your birthday. I wanted to give it to you then, but you can have it now. I hope you like it. The Report Lee sat among the books at the library and thought about his group project. They had to turn it in soon, but he hadn't even started his part. Jack and Claire were in his group. They had worked hard. They were also very smart, and Lee didn't want them to get a bad grade.
Jack did the report. He wrote a lot of very good sentences and described things with great adjectives. Claire drew a nice map of the stars. Now, Lee needed to do his part of the project. Well, I suppose I need to start my model, Lee thought. Making a model of a planet was really hard. Lee tried to read several books, but he couldn't comprehend any of the charts. We're going to fail because of me, Lee said. He put his head down on the table and said, I wish I could see a planet instead of having to read about it. Suddenly, there was a bright light. Lee was pulled from his chair, through the roof, and right into a strange ship. Hello, kid, said an alien. Did you ask for help? Lee told the friendly alien all about his project. The alien agreed to help Lee solve his problem. First, we'll fly through space to view the universe. Then, I can help you make a model of my planet. Soon, they were going through the clouds. They passed the moon. Then they viewed Mars. Lee was very excited. Instead of a bad grade, his group would have the best project ever. It's time to go home, the alien finally said. On the way back, he helped Lee make a model of the planet Mars. Soon, they were on Earth. Thanks, Lee said. My model will be awesome. Then he took his model and said goodbye to his new friend. The Lion and the Rabbit a cruel lion lived in the forest. Every day, he killed and ate a lot of animals. The other animals were afraid the lion would kill them all. The animals told the lion, let's make a deal. If you promise to eat only one animal each day, then one of us will come to you every day. Then you don't have to hunt and kill us. The plan sounded well thought out to the lion, so he agreed, but he also said, If you don't come every day, I promise to kill all of you the next day. Each day after that, one animal went to the lion so that the lion could eat it. Then, all the other animals were safe. Finally, it was the rabbit's turn to go to the lion. The rabbit went very slowly that day, so the lion was angry when the rabbit finally arrived. The lion angrily asked the rabbit, Why are you late? I was hiding from another lion in the forest. That lion said he was the king so I was afraid. The lion told the rabbit, I am the only king here. Take me to that other lion, and I will kill him. The rabbit replied, I will be happy to show you where he lives. The rabbit led the lion to an old well in the middle of the forest. The well was very deep with water at the bottom. The rabbit told the lion, look in there. The lion lives at the bottom. When the lion looked in the well, he could see his own face in the water. He thought that was the other lion. Without waiting another moment, the lion jumped into the well to attack the other lion.
He never came out. All of the other animal in the forest were very pleased with the rabbit's clever trick. Thank <laughs> you.